We can now write and execute Python natively in Excel. No need to install any add-ins and no clunky separate windows for writing the code. Super exciting, I know. The new PY function converts the formula bar into Python mode, enabling us to import Python libraries like pandas, numpy, seaborn, and more. We can define data frames based on the data in our files, perform data analysis with ease, and build spectacular charts. In this video, I'm going to cover step-by-step -step how to use Python in Excel for data analysis and charting. And if, like me, you know nothing about Python, I'll show you how to use ChatGPT to write the Python for you. There's an example file you can download from a link in the video description. Now, before we start, I should point out that Python is currently only available to Microsoft 365 users on the beta channel. Without further ado, Python in Excel. I'll start by loading the libraries that I want to work with. To activate Python mode, type equals PY and tab. Notice the formula bar now has the green banner to the left to indicate it's in Python mode, as does the cell. Now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control F2 to switch to the formula bar, and then I can make it a bit bigger. It's just going to give me more room to write my code. To import the libraries, I simply list what I want. So I want to import pandas and seaborn, and I can leave it at that, except Excel will display a zero because there's nothing to display in the cell. So rather than that, I'll enter some text that gives me a visual indicator that the libraries have loaded so I don't accidentally forget what's in this cell and delete it. And then to complete a Python formula, you use control and enter. If the cell doesn't display the object icon, you can change it via the drop down here and make it a Python object. So now we've loaded our libraries. Next, I need to define a data frame. So in this file, I have a load of employee data. We've got lots of columns that I can analyze. And the first thing I need to do is define this data in a data frame. So let's do that underneath the libraries. So again, equals PY tab, and I need to name my data frame and a common name you'll see is simply DF. So DF is going to equal the data. So let's select that. And then I need to just tell Excel that my data has headers. And again, to enter this formula, control enter. It gives me a circular reference warning. I think this is a red herring because there are no other Python formulas in this file. And this formula is below the only other formula. So I'm just going to click OK at that point and evaluate anyway. It's going to spell the data. And that's because it's defaulting to set the Python output as an Excel value. Let's switch it to an object and that's just going to collapse it into a single cell that I can reference elsewhere. Now, you don't have to place the Python libraries and data frame in separate cells to the Python code. I could write them all in one formula, but by keeping them separate, they're available for use in other Python formulas in the workbook. So this is good practice. All right, I'm ready to analyze my data. So let's generate some descriptive statistics using pandas. Now, because Python cells calculate in row major order, as we saw with that error message, left to right, top to bottom, the data frame must be defined in a cell above the cell containing a Python formula that references it. So I'm going to step down and equals PY. This isn't a big formula, so I'm just going to write it in the cell. Now I can use the data frame by referencing it by name. So DF dot describe and this is going to give me descriptive statistics for my data frame. So control enter and it'll spill the results to the cells. And what it's done is looked at all the numeric columns in my data set and returned the statistics for each one. The first thing I wanted to do was filter the data to only return statistics for some of the columns, but I don't know how to write Python. So I turned to my new best friend, ChatGPT, to write the code for me. For this, it's best if you have a subscription to ChatGPT Plus and make sure Code Interpreter is turned on. Now, if you don't have ChatGPT Plus, you can use Bing AI Search in Creative Mode. You'll find it defaults generally to the Balanced Mode. Go to Creative Mode and then you can use it to generate your Python code. I'm going to work with ChatGPT for this example and I've already written my prompt. Let's paste it in and we'll just read through it. I wanted to write the Python code using pandas to return descriptive statistics for a data frame called DF from the following columns. 
Now I found that it tries to give me example data, so I'm telling it again, don't give me example data, reference my data frame called DF. Let's give it a whirl. All right, let's copy the code and see if that works. So again, I'm going to place it down here below my data frame equals PY. Let's control F2 to toggle back up to the formula bar and I'll paste it in. Let's just make it a bit bigger. So it's declaring the columns and it's asking it to use the describe function. Let's control and enter and see if that works. And there we go. So there's my columns that I specified and the descriptive statistics, pretty easy. What I have found with ChatGPT is you're likely to get a different response each time. If you do get an error, you can just go back to ChatGPT and explain that it didn't work and it will try again. Now, one thing I have found is if you reference your data frame using the data frame name, sometimes you'll get an error. If so, try referencing the data frame by explicitly referencing the cell. So just delete the reference by name, click on the cell containing the data frame and control and enter to complete it. And of course it works again. I found referencing data frames from other sheets always requires explicitly referencing the data frame rather than by name. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at creating some charts or Python plots as they're known. Now I've already loaded the Seaborn library and these are some of the charts that we can generate with that library. They're amazing. We don't have anything like most of these in Excel. And for this example, I'm going to generate this joint plot here that puts the data into hex bins and we've got histograms on either side of the chart for the data series on each axis. There's some sample code down here, so let's grab that and we'll go and test it out. So again, equals PY tab, control V to paste in the code that I copied. Now it's going to load the libraries again. I don't need that, so let's delete them. This line here is setting the theme and style. And then we have some random data. I don't want to use random data. I want to use the data in my data frame. So let's delete that line. Next, we have the random data for the X axis. So I'm going to delete that and then go and click on my data frame. And then to specify the column I want to work with, put it in square brackets with a single quote. And then for the Y axis, again, delete the random data, click on the data frame. And for this, I want the monthly income close my square bracket. The next line is telling it how to plot the data and what color to use. You could change the hex code here and use a different color. I'm pretty happy with the green. It's in keeping with Excel at least. So let's control and enter to see how we go. So you can see there's a tiny, tiny chart in there. Let's make the cell a bit bigger. And um, we can make the cell bigger and bigger until we get the chart the size we want. Or we can right click, go picture in cell, create reference and this generates a linked image that's linked to that cell. So if the Python code or my source data changes in that cell, this image is going to reflect it. Now, the first thing you're probably going to want to do is control X to cut that out and put it on a new sheet where your report's going to sit, but you'll notice it now gives an error. And that's because it doesn't explicitly put in the sheet reference when it generates that linked picture. So just go back to the sheet, click on it, delete the cell reference it puts in because you've already got one there and enter. And now the chart is linked correctly and you can move it around anywhere in the workbook. Hopefully Microsoft will fix this. So the sheet name is included in the reference by default because chances are you're going to move it to a different sheet to the one containing the chart in a cell. Now there are a load of different charts to try out and in the example file for this lesson, you'll find the ridge plot, heat map and histogram. So be sure to download it from the link in the video description. Now Python cells return the last assignment or last expression. If none is returned, you'll see zero in a cell. Whenever a Python formula is entered, it triggers all Python code in the file to recalculate. So you're likely to see a lot of busy errors. You may find it better to turn calculation mode to manual while working in files containing a lot of Python. To trigger a manual calculation, simply press F9 or switch back to automatic. If you see connect or calc, there's likely something wrong with the Python cloud service. So you can restart the Python session with control shift alt F9 or via the formulas tab and then reset. And lastly, if you see external or value errors, 
It means there's something wrong with your code. You can check the diagnostics pane for hints about what might be wrong. Or go back to ChatGPT and ask for help. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments if you're excited to use Python in Excel. Don't forget to download the file for this tutorial from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.